फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन नो सच सेल कुड हैव बीन वन इन द कोर्स ऑफ इम्पोर्ट बिकॉज द सेल डिड नॉट ओकेजन द इम्पोर्ट नन ऑफ दोज वॉज एक्सपोर्ट बिकॉज द गुड्स वर नॉट सपोज टू एंटर इन टू द टेरिटरी ऑफ एन अदर कंट्री इन द फॉर्म दोज वर डिस्पैच द एनोलॉगी ऑफ सेल्स फ्रॉम ड्यूटी फ्री शॉप्स वॉज इरेलीवेंट फॉर इट ऑलवेज रिमेन्स ऑन द अदर साइड कस्टम्स फ्रंटायर एंड सो द रिस्क इज ट्रांसफर्ड बिफोर क्रॉसिंग ऑफ द फ्रंटायर Thus, there was no gain say that sales of goods to masters of ships were sales in the state and were taxable. The dealer was asked to pay tax on such sales and revise the return for the years yet to be assessed. The assessing authority was requested to revise, if necessary, assessments not impugned. the appellate and revisional authorities were requested to treat the tax payable on such sale as admitted one feeling aggrieved the appellants resorted to revision before the tribunal which came to be rejected following the decision of the tribunal passed on the same date in case of the companion appeal the appellant carried the matter by way of a writ petition being number 6 oblique 2007 before the high court which came to be dismissed by the high court upholding the decision of the authority which has had held that the sales in question would be amendable to sales act under the 1994 act the thrust of the argument of the appellants in these appeals is that the process of import was not complete at the time of sale of the goods in question of the to the foreign going ship and the transaction of sale was in the course of import for which reason it was not amendable to sales tax and in fact the state would have no authority to levy such tax to buttress this submission reliance was placed on article 286 of the constitution of india providing for restrictions as to imposition of tax on the sale or purchase of goods and on section 5 of the cst act in particular sub section 2 thereof to contend that the sales in question shall be deemed to have taken place in the course of import of goods in the territory of india reliance was placed on the constitution bench decision of this court in j dot v dot gokul and company priv limited versus assistant collector of sales tax relying on the definition of expression crossing the customs frontier of india in section 2 ab of the cst act of the customs area in section 2 sub section 11 and of customs station in section 2 sub section 13 of the customs act 1962 it was urged that crossing the customs frontiers means crossing the limits of the customs station including crossing the area in which imported goods or exported goods are ordinary kept before the clearance by the customs authorities reliance was also placed on the decision in minerals and metals trading corporation of india limited versus sales tax officer and others
which has had occasion to constitute section 5 of the CST Act. It was then urged that the goods in question were kept for warehousing and a declaration was given by the appellants that the said goods would be exported to foreign going vessels as ship stores in terms of section 88 of the custom act the appellants have adverted to section 69 85 and 88 of the customs act to contend that the stated goods could be exported to a place outside india without payment of import duty and until import duty was paid the import thereof cannot be said to be complete reliance was then placed on the decision in indian tourist development corporation limited versus assistant commissioner of Com commercial taxes which according to the appellants applied on all fours as even in that case the goods were kept in the bonded warehouses and then supplied to duty free shops which transaction has been extricated from the applicability of sales tax payable to the state on the ground that the goods had not crossed the customs frontiers and the sale was deemed to have taken place in the course of import of goods into the territory of India. According to the appellants, the finding recorded by the authorities below which commended to the High Court was completely in the teeth of the aforesaid decision. The appellants have distinguished the decision in Madras Marine on the premise that in that case the goods were intended for re-export only and in that context it was held that there was a necessity of a destination in a foreign country. Moreover, the said decision has not considered the efficacy of Section 2, Subsection AB of the CST Act, nor notice the dictum in J.V. Gokul, which dealt with the case of import. It was urged that the decision in J.V. Gokul had been followed in a recent decision in State of Kerala and others versus F.R. William Friendes.